Hey coach, I uh, hope you're enjoying the video. Make sure you subscribe and like. We love those. Also go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. If you want to become a better coach in a less than a dollar a day, you can, you can do that. My mentor, my personal email address, I will help you become a better basketball coach. Go over and check it out. Let's head back to the video. All right, welcome to the Basketball Leadership Podcast. <clears throat> coach and I look a lot more rested. <laughs> for those of you who are watching rather than listening. I'll tell you a story, coach. I saw, I saw the, um, I saw the track coach and the baseball coach in the hallway and, you know, it's middle of their season right now. <laughs> it's so funny. They're all like, Oh, I'm, I'm, a, the, the, I always do that with the football coach too. You can tell when you're in season or when you're out of season. Oh, right? totally. <laughs> it's just in the <laughs> <It's>, face. <laughs> well, I had fun. something today. I went to, uh, I had a dentist appointment and, right after the dentist appointment, you schedule the next one. And our season just ended because we went to the very end and uh, scheduled it six months in advance, like November 7th. And the person's like, well, yeah, right before basketball. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just ending basketball. I'm just getting in that. I feel good at the stage. And I, and, I, and I always like to keep it back out of basketball season. season if I can, but then sometimes it gets bumped and then yeah. it's like, if you go to December and then it's six months later, it's like, it's a cycle. I know. Yeah. <laughs> basketball coaches will understand what we're talking about with that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. All right. I got to get, gotta get the car guy, get the oil change change. Cause basketball season <laughs> starts in two weeks. Cause I just got my own. I can maybe make it through basketball season. I'm not driving quite as much. Um, all right. So what's today's topic, coach? We're talking about the four ways to lead out loud. And I think as we teach leadership to kids and um, we really want to try to simplify it. And so, you know, these four ways, I think, do that. Um, and, and the first two are like kids that really want to lead by example. Maybe they're not really strong vocal leaders yet. And we're trying to kind of grow that account accountability piece into them. And, and so the first way to lead out loud, I think, is to cheer. Okay. And that's, that's cheer for your teammates on the court, cheer for your teammates when you're not on the court. Um, that's giving them high fives and fist bumps and clapping and, and, and just being positive and, and uplifting. I think we can all do that. Kids can all do that. And it's like, uh, it, it's the first step to becoming a vocal leader is focus on something easy uh, that uplifts kids. Um, and I'll just go through all four and then we can talk about it. the second one is is to connect and that's more of the touching part of it or bringing teammates together um so you're cheering you know praising um and then you're connecting them so that's the high fives the touches that's the steve nash stuff to try to to really connect your team it's a positive approach to to leadership um and then the third and fourth are really where you get into accountability and it gets harder so uh this progression the next step and i and i think when kids become more comfortable cheering and connecting these become easier so but how do you teach the first two before we go on to the second two how do you teach the first two because i agree when people are cheering or clapping or doing that you can feel it's like going to a rock concert it brings energy totally. but how do you how do you I, agree. I, I think leader you know you lead yourself first you lead by example and then you lead vocally you lead out loud these are the two phases of leadership so you have to have these conversations with kid kids and you know lead yourself what does that mean this 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 and this okay you're ready for the next step we need you to lead the easiest way you can lead on our team is to cheer for your teammates what does that mean it means when you're on the bench, you're doing this. When you're in the game, you're doing this. When they're at the free throw line, you're doing this. You're giving reminders. We've talked about those things. Um, so you, you're guiding them through this process. And that's really what it is. It's a process. And you say, okay, the next one now is to connect. How do you connect your teammates in the locker room? How do you connect them on the court? How do you connect them outside of um, practice? And again, that's, that's a, a verbal, vocal type of leadership. Then you can get into the accountability discussions. And, and the first one would be to confront teammates when they're doing things that are not helping the team. Uh, confront them in the locker room. Confront them outside of school. Confront them on the court. It's probably easiest to confront them on the court um, because that's a comfort zone for kids. If they're not doing their part, that's a hard step, but it's an important step. And then that final one is just to challenge them push them to be better, push them to give more, push them 
um, you know, encourage them to, to do more to help the team win. So I think those four C's are a good way to kind of give a progression of verbal vocal leadership leading out loud. Yeah. And I told you, I, I don't know if we talked about that example. I had this happen in a tournament game where one of my captains basically confronted a kid was going to put him in the bench, said, coach, he ain't ready. Three other kids yeah. jumped in, goes, he ain't ready, coach. Mm. And I sat him back down and put someone else in because he was kind of walking. He wasn't focused. And yep. it was a safe confront because he knew I was going to take the lead. Yeah, <laughs> But he yep. knew that maybe I didn't see it either because yep. I'm dealing with subs and timeouts and fouls and what are we running? And, you know, um, yep. and I told him after I said that was perfect. That was perfect leadership because I trust you enough and you've been yep. with me for three years that if you say something, you know, I'm not, a, yep. might we, I might not always agree with it. I might not always do it, but I hear you and I yep. will take a, take it very seriously. And in that situation, it was like, okay, yep. Um, so I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. That, that confronting is easier on the court or in practice than it is maybe in the locker. Room. Yeah. And, and the, a safer way to do it is to, say it to the coach, whether it's in front of the kid or not in front of the kid, it is a form of accountability. And if, if you're about winning as a player, um, you don't want that kid on the court. And so step one is tell your coach. Step two is to tell the the player st- and do it to both at the same time, if, if you're comfortable too. But, you know, accountability is hard. It's hard for high school kids in particular, because they're friends, they're peers, they've grown up together. It's, it's hard, but you know, we have to talk about it with kids, with everyone, so they know that accountability is a good thing. Accountability makes you better. It makes us better. And you should never shy away from accountability or feel bad when your teammate tries to hold you accountable. They're trying to make you better and you're trying to make us better. So, right. And I, and I've noticed this with <clears throat> team meetings, being on time, keeping the lock that I've yep. noticed that that's even actually a little bit easier than the court stuff sometimes. Yep. Um, cause Hey, you know, coach wants us here in time. Blah, 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 blah. So they can throw it back onto me and it's an, it's like a, it's like a baby step for them. Like yeah. to, to, to eventually go up that step and maybe now, it's a crucial part of the game and I got to confront and say, Hey, make sure you two are boxing out. This is a big rebound, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that's some of the stuff that can happen too. Yeah. And it, it can be kind of through humor a little bit in a way, but not humor. So, you know, like for us, we've got every minute that you're late, it's two laps. You know, if you show up to anything, you straggle in, if you're late to the bus by 30 seconds, it's too late. I mean, it's, it's, it's little things, but, um, it becomes almost a, if anyone is ever late, you know, their teammates are on them and that's like a safe way to do it because it's a, it's a rule. It's a program rule. Kids should know it. And and they're going to, I mean, kids like throwing the, their buddies under the bus. I'm right? telling I mean, you, <laughs> well, I had a kid that could go through tryouts and, you know, we do some conditioning to get the, to get the locker room. And, <clears throat> and eventually when he got healthy, they kept, Hey, so-and-so hasn't run yet. So-and-so hasn't run yet. So-and-so it's like, yep. you're right. It's like, and that again, that's a that's a safe, funny, safe. Yep. You know, a coach will take care of it. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yes. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. So go over the challenge part. How do? What do you mean by challenge? Dive into that a little bit more. I mean, if you have, you, we got players on our team that you want to get more out of, or a player wants to get more out of. Maybe, you know, they they need to be challenged. They need a a peer, a friend, a leader on the team to push them. You know, we need more out of you. Um, we need you more focused. We need you. You know, we had a player like that on our team that, um, you know, I, I kept coming back to, he, he, he just inconsistent, but like Uber athlete, um, he turned it on in the tournament, man. I mean, he, he made the all tournament team. He had 19 rebounds in our quarterfinal game. I mean, the kid just like went all in and, you know, some of that was he, a was, se- it, was he a senior? He's a senior. And, uh, you know, kids challenging kids put, you know, our, our, his teammates, his friends talked about how much we need him. Like, like we need you so bad this game. Um, you know, our, our other guy that rebounds a lot is going to be guarding one of their best players. He's not going to be inside all the time. Like you've got to dominate the boards. We need you. 
you know, so you're, you're kind of challenging and encouraging, but you're really challenging. And he rose to the challenge and, uh, you know, then it built a little momentum and he had a lot of success and it kind of carried on, uh, to the end. So those type of things are, are that verbal way to kind of challenge uh, a teammate to be better. I love that. All right. Any other closing remarks on that coach? I think that's good. All right. Till next week. Thanks for watching, Coach. Make sure you go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified every time we come back on. But you will not be disappointed with teachhoops.com. 14-day free trial. Let's go check it out. Have a great day.